What's up, brothers and sisters? You found your way back once again. You're at the Alchemix channel, and today we're going to be going over something a little different. We like to mix it up here. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about some stepping stones to help you become more of a producer and making your own sound and being able to build your own uh, transitions, remixes, all that kind of stuff that uh the main reason we need it nowadays is because copyright infringement is such a real problem and every dj needs to be able to press play on something on a big stage that they're not gonna have removed from their social medias or you know get cease and desist letters on um that's my main thing for production nowadays why i say that all djs should be doing it because uh it's just one of the fastest ways to develop your own sound and definitely uh, avoid the pitfalls that come from only uh, recycling other people's music. Um, production for me, somebody gave me a bootleg version of Fruit Loops back when I first started years ago and I liked it. I would basically just paint in with my mouse in the grid uh, drum loops, basically, percussion transition tools that I used uh, while mixing. And uh, it was useful, but Fruit Loops and Ableton, these kind of programs are so infinitely deep and hard to just pick up and run with if it's not the kind of programming computer tech background that you come from. Me being a DJ, I am very hardware oriented. I like dedicated hardware that I can then fine tune and map and tweak a little bit more to my likes and needs. And uh, we're going to look at three different ways that you can begin uh, getting into production with these kind of baby step tools that help you uh, find a uh, find your way into production without just diving into the deep end and drowning, which is, I could never have gotten there. I could never have just sat down at, at Fruit Loops and then figured it out. You know, I, I had to find my own way of introducing myself to these concepts. Um, number one here, we're going to look at uh, the F1. This is from Native Instruments. It's a pretty uh, amazing controller. It's pretty cheap. I got this for 100 bucks off Craigslist. There's one button that's a little hard to press down, but even that, it's not a huge hindrance. Um, and basically, it's like having a mini launch pad. It's like just a small version of um, what producers usually use in order to build different channels and uh, create and layer different uh, elements of a song. So the F1 is an amazing little piece. It's been out for a long time, and... Uh, I've even more recently seen uh, Trey's, he uh, was using it mapped for Serato, he had his S9 here, an F1 right next to it to trigger some loops and cues and stuff, and then he had his two turntables and he did an awesome scratch show using the F1 with Serato, which it's not native for, but uh, it could be so useful if uh, other softwares had similar little modular plugins. That's one thing that I really like about Native Instruments. So you have up faders for four different mini channels basically you have filters so you can basically do your own compression you can just kinda roll off the sound until you start to hear it and then uh, it's gonna sound better over a real nice PA system if you're cutting off the frequencies you're not using and basically you can just cue loops, one shots, you can have multiple pages, it's really easy to create your own if you buy stem files or something for a song, you can just basically live remix it a million different ways for days. Like, it's really, really cool stuff. And just the way that Tractor auto clocks their master decks and syncs everything, it's a lot more sensible to me. I know that's opinion, and a lot of people's opinions are different. But for me, I was on Serato for years, and... Uh, I could never figure out the simple sync or the smart sync. I just never really used any of them because it it always tripped me up. It always did weird things I didn't expect it to. However, 
for the most part, Tractor's system is very logical, right out of the box, set up in a way that just it just kind of works well with my kind of flow and style. So here's going to be three different uh, sample banks of some different songs, and we'll just create a new sound using these remix decks, which is basically a kind of intro to uh, producing with a, a full DAW software. See, we basically had three channels that were assigned here and we were able to take bits and pieces of all sorts of other songs and loops and whatever and create a completely new sound just using a pretty common pretty easy to achieve software if you buy an F1 even if it's used it should come with a full serial number and license and key to tractor and uh, you can get to doing this right away um, the remix decks is a great way to get your mind around stems and stuff like that.
stems are a great way to build your own remix decks. And once you have like your comfortable uh, sounds that you like and use, it's super easy to implement them with this software into live remixing and stuff. I, I love Tractor specifically for this, and I hope the new version doesn't get rid of the remix decks. All right, we're going to check out some uh, Beatmaker 3 next. One thing I will say about Tractor, especially when you're clocking that many devices, syncing them and MIDI, doing all of that work, it is pretty CPU hungry. It can eat your battery pretty fast. Make sure that you got a full battery and you're plugged in if you're going to be doing a lot of uh, this uh, kind of stuff. Tractor, it does amazing linking to other things like Ableton and stuff. You can give another DJ master control of some of your decks and stuff and let him sync and whatever, and you can mix back and forth live. There's so many cool things you can do with Tractor. There's a reason why it's such a beloved software in the community, and uh, it's a great intro into, uh, into getting into production and stuff like that. So hang in there for a second. We'll check out some Beatmaker 3. This is Beatmaker 3, and it is amazing software in my opinion. It's um, iOS, it's all on the iPad, and although I'm usually not a fan of touchscreen kind of stuff in DJ equipment, obviously an Apple iPad, they've been making this equipment forever. It's extremely accurate, and uh, it works great. What What this did for me was it finally gave me an option to build sample banks and then just basically you can set a loop and then you can record right into that loop. You can have a metronome on. Basically it's what a lot of uh, hip hop producers, a lot of beat makers, um, it's their preferred style of creating and sampling music. It's simply you create a sample bank and then you're able to punch it right in. This isn't a great one, what's a good one? So Beatmaker 3, it's wonderful because it's 30 bucks, I think. It's an app you can just download for $30. Um, but essentially, you can get all of these different pre-made sample banks here um, for free. These ones were just uh, what was available after I downloaded it. There's plenty of paid ones as well. But it basically tells you uh, a digital drum kit, uh, deep percussion, distorted bass, uh, synth leads. It, it gives you an idea of what's in the pack and then you go in there you find them. If you find your favorite ones it's really easy to just uh, create your own, save it and have, uh, have your, your stuff good to go. They have all sorts of good and any sound you like but it's not quite what you're thinking of in your head you can simply come in here and you can adjust it. This is all basically what you will find in a DAW in a simple touch screen, easy to pick up and start learning type of device. Uh, I, I have a huge fondness for 
this uh, this software here because it was the first one that really let me produce the way I wanted to, 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 to build beats and punch the sounds in on the fly. And it's definitely not the most professional. Um, it's limited in a few of its things. Automation is kind of difficult. Uh, it's definitely a limited amount of uh, sounds. And it's kind of a good thing in my opinion. When you're getting started out with production, a lot of stuff will come with 25 gigabytes or whatever, something crazy of sounds and music, and it's overwhelming. Like, it was really nice to begin with a smaller amount of music and sound and instruments and synth to work with and begin to step it up from there. But the, the beauty of it is it gave me the ability to, like, begin to differentiate uh, the channels, and being able to go in and find my patterns and edit them after if I didn't punch it in just right. All the kind of stuff that you're going to be using in a big professional full feature DAW, you got it here in light form and it, it's a 30 bucks was amazing. I got lucky. My buddy told me about the deal uh, at 2018 NAM or whatever. For three days this was free. I hopped on it and I'm so glad I did. I still think for $30 it's worth every single penny and um, you can do all sorts of simple but unique sounding creative uh, intros loops basic stuff right here with this on the fly it's a great thing to mess with in the airport while you're waiting or whatever at the licensing agency if you're stuck somewhere for a while instead of pulling out a Game Boy pull out this and some headphones and you're good to make yourself like truly you know copyright free fun, simple sounds and music. It's, it's good stuff. The one thing I don't like about it, I can say is, in my opinion, the, the downfall. Getting files from here onto your computer where you can actually like finish them and use them and edit them and all that stuff, um, it's a pain in the butt. I own a Mac. I should be able to transfer this a million different ways from here over to my computer and work with it but it's a huge pain in the butt. You almost have to download an extra app for this and change it into a different type of file and export it. Uh, there was no simple, easy way I could find. I even looked for videos on YouTube and nobody seemed to have just a clear, simple, easy export from Beatmaker 3 answer. It was uh, really surprising to me. I have made one track with this, but the process of getting, like, the song off of this into my computer to finish it and mix it with the audio and the vocals I had. It was such a pain in the butt. I haven't really tried to do anything production with, uh, with this one either. You can actually import your own sounds and stuff like that. It just doesn't seem like it's as user friendly as it should be, could be, whatever. Um, but yeah, for 30 bucks, if you don't already have this, if you do own an iPad, grab it, like, grab it. If you're interested in production at all, if you do YouTube, whatever, you just want to be able to make your own simple loops and beats for your intros or transitions, whatever, like, get yourself Beatmaker 3. It's awesome software, a great, like, real stepping stone. The F1's not really a, a full-featured intro to DAWs. Like, this gives you a pretty good idea of everything you're going to be coming across. It's just not as in-depth or tweakable or tunable or plug-in friendly as your fancy DAWs. All right, next up is Machine, and we'll wrap it up after that. Thanks for hanging in there.
this is a machine. It's Native Instruments again, but it's dedicated specifically for pretty much music production. And uh, it's very popular with the hip-hop and beat makers. I know a lot of trap and other people that seem to prefer the machine. The machine, it, it was it, it was like the most common kind of sample bank I saw a lot of DJs using as their kind of like side controller over the last couple of years. Like, didn't seem to matter what style of DJing they were into. It's just a really universal thing. It can be uh, plugged into Ableton as well and just makes a great all-around controller. Um, it's basically the same concept that we just looked at in Beatmaker 3 uh, where you can assign different sample banks here on the big pads and then you can assign different groups of samples on the small pads and it's not standalone, but it's pretty much uh, designed so that you could, if you want to. A lot of people, they actually get an app for their uh, MacBook that lets them close the lid, but it still runs the internal uh, software. So you can basically run it without having the, lap book, the laptop present. Um, but it sounds great. The, the great thing about native instruments I've found is uh, their audio interfaces, their sound, it's real nice and warm and just something I really appreciate. My Z2 is probably my go-to mixer and uh, I think it has a real nice sound quality to it. This uh, machine blew me away. I've uh, had a Roland DJ808 with a drum machine on it before which is real nice, has good sound on it, but just the uh, the level of uh, like fine detail in the velocity and all that stuff you can really get it to where it's hard to tell that this was programmed on a software it can it can mimic a, a live artist very well but um, basically you have all your instruments and sounds and synths uh, preloaded and that's one thing I'll be honest it's not the easiest thing to get everything loaded and working and they have a what's called like native access it's supposed to help you download and stay up to date with everything on all your different softwares but it is a bit intense and confusing trying to get everything set up right and then there's still some extra like plug-in or something you need in order for it to like actually sample for you right here in the software it's it's a bit of a a process to get it set up but once it's working um, for the price you pay, I guess this is, I keep saying these are like stepping stones or intro to DAW. This is a full-blown DAW. This one right here is not necessarily uh, any sort of light, you know, software. It, it's not as intricate as uh, Ableton or Fruit Loops. The, the limitations, I would say, are mostly in the uh, automations. It's a little more awkward to be able to apply automation to individual patterns in a group without affecting the whole group which is kind of weird but there's there's definitely just uh, infinite ability to hop on and begin uh, building sounds hands-on which is nice I like to be able to have your metronome and uh, be able to uh, punch in the the sounds manually on the fly that's just how I prefer to to I need hardware I'm a DJ I'm, I'm a DJ first and production is an amazing wonderful outlet for creativity and I'm, I'm excited to get deeper into all of it but um, but if you're the kind of person who can sit down and just learn Ableton you're a very smart computer techie kind of guy and you know you can do that. I would advise you to just go that way, really, because it's 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 all in one. It's expensive up front, but this way, uh, it's still spendy. I think it's six hundred bucks for this uh, MK3 version of the machine. You can get all sorts of older versions used, but you always gotta be concerned because these punch pads get used so much. Um, but yeah, I really like it. I've uh, I've found that for me, I like to have a turntable over here lined into it, 
and I like to sample directly right into this software here. It takes a little while to get used to using vinyl and getting it all lined up and building your sample banks, but it's really fun, uh, and I think it sounds pretty dang good, the just direct feed. Uh, I've tried doing fancier ways of importing better quality files, and I didn't necessarily like the audio better overall. So uh, as an audio interface, as a production tool, as just a sample punch pad, if you like to have drum racks or something uh, and add that into your live uh, your live shows, like the the machine is an awesome option that uh, just it'll work all around in all sorts of different uh, softwares and setups. There's a million maps out there for every software, I'm sure, and you could fine tune and tweak it from there. It's very MIDI friendly. So these are my uh, my uh, opinions about uh, the best ways for DJs who are a little overwhelmed by the concept of DAWs to get their feet wet and uh, begin making uh, the sounds that they have in their head into uh, tracks that they can play out live. So uh, let me know what you think if there's another really beginner friendly DAW. Eventually after I get really good with machine I think I'd like to step up to Logic. I think that's probably where I'll be most comfortable. I, I've definitely had some ex exposure to Ableton and like I said I've played with Fruit Loops and I think that uh, I think that that's probably where I'm gonna invest as my uh, more mastering final step kinda DAW software eventually but uh, I still have tons and tons to, to learn. I'd like to get to the point where I can operate this machine without having to have the laptop open. That would be nice just to keep the studio desk kind of clear and minimal hardware that just does what you need it to and that's really a a good selling point there. So love you guys. Hope you find this helpful and uh, if you're into production, you've been DJing for a while, I hope that you'll uh, consider some of these options. The, the Beatmaker 3 for the price, like, it, it's just a really, really good one for uh, for getting the, the idea of punching in beats and stuff like that. So, I love you guys. Have a good day. Take it easy.